What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. Today's video is going to be on safety stops and we're going to discuss exactly what a safety stop is, how it differs from a decompression stop. We're also going to discuss how to conduct it and whether or not we should be doing safety stops after every single dive. So let's take a quick look at several sources here and we're going to use, of course, Wikipedia as one source. We're going to use one of the larger and most prominent dive training agencies out there and then we're also going to look at a gear manufacturer and we're going to look at their computer manual and see what they say a safety stop is and how we should be performing it. So according to Wikipedia it says a safety stop is a stop in depth anywhere between three to six meters or 10 to 20 feet and they are usually done during no stop dives. Now no stop dives of course are non-decompression dives or um, within our decompression limit. It simply means that whatever depth we go to and however long we stay we do not exceed the recreational limits which allows us to make a straight ascent to the surface no faster than a foot every two seconds and we truly get rid of or we eliminate the, the most we can the risk of that decompression sickness setting in. So does that mean according to that that I should always do one or I shouldn't always do one? Well it's very vague it doesn't really say. So let's look at one of the training agencies of what they say a safety stop is and how to perform it. So according to the training agency it says a safety stop for three minutes at 15 feet is required any time the diver comes within three pressure groups of a no decompression limit and for any dive to a depth of 100 foot or greater. Now according to this it's saying or this agency they're saying that it is required but only when the diver comes within three pressure groups of the no decompression limit. So does that mean that we don't have to do it if we're not within those three pressure groups? And it also says any dives deeper than 100 feet. Well, what if we make a dive to 40 feet or 70 feet? Does that mean we're required to do it? Well, according to that training agency, we're only required if we come within three pressure groups of our maximum limit or our no decompression limit. So it's a little bit more detail there as far as when we're required to. Now this of course is being based off if we use their tables for planning. Let's see if we don't use the tables and we use a dive computer what a gear, one of the larger gear manufacturers says about making safety stops. So according to this gear manufacturer here in their manual it just simply says a safety stop is generated as soon as the depth of a dive exceeds 10 meters or 33 feet. It also says it has a duration of 3 minutes and is carried out between the depths of 20 feet and 10 feet or 6 meters and 3 meters at the end of a dive prior to surfacing. Such stop is not mandatory but highly recommended. So it's pretty consistent with the other ones as far as depth, how long we stay, but even the gear manufacturer says it's not mandatory, simply highly recommended. So what is the difference between a safety stop and a decompression stop and why is one mandatory and one is not? Well remember the safety stop is simply more nothing than added conservatism built into the dive to bleed off a little bit extra nitrogen and they're also designed to be used on any dive. Decompression diving, recreational diving, it doesn't matter. But now we do have depth limitations there that would set in. Just like the gear manufacturer says, their computer will not kick in the safety stop mode until that depth of 10 meters or 33 feet has been exceeded. So does that mean that if I make a dive to 20 feet, I don't need to come up to 15 feet and do a safety stop? Well, once again, if I do not exceed my no decompression limit, then no Technically, you don't have to do one. So what's the difference between that and what's a decompression stop? Well, a decompression stop is when we do exceed our limitations, our depth limitations or our no decompression time. We've exceeded that. We have super saturated ourselves with nitrogen and we do have to bleed it off at a certain rate. So we need to be making them deep stops or decompression stops to bleed off that extra nitrogen. And then of course we would continue to do a safety stop on the way up prior to exiting the water. So one, we're required to do it simply because we exceeded our recreational limitations to where the other one, we did not exceed it. Now, whether or not you should be doing a safety stop, that is completely up to you. I will tell you right now that I always perform a safety stop anytime that I'm deeper than say 40 feet 
for any reason on any dive. Now, let's talk a little bit about how I perform a safety stop because there seems to be some confusion as far as exactly where you should stop, how long you should stop, should you not be moving, should you be hovering, should you be swimming. So if we think of a generalized definition of the safety stop, it's a stop at 10 to 20 feet. We will average that at 15 feet for argument's sake. It's a stop at 15 feet for no more than three to five minutes for added conservatism, meaning I'm bleeding off just that extra little bit of nitrogen given that I have the air supply to do it, just so that my surface interval is a little bit shorter and I'm helping my body out a little bit better. So how do we actually perform it? Does that mean that we got to come up an anchor line and hang on to the rope? Does that mean that I got to hover in one specific spot for three to five minutes? Or does that mean I can actually swim around that three to 15 foot depth? Well, me personally, I do all the above. If I'm in a strong current in the ocean and I'm coming up that anchor line, if there's not a hang bar below the boat, I will actually just hang on to the anchor line at 15 feet or 10 to 20 feet, if you will, until my three to five minutes have has uh, expired and then I'll make a slow safe ascent. Now I do that of course because there is a current. I don't want to get blown away from the boat. In the event that I do, I can shoot a surface marker buoy and the boat can actually follow me during that safety stop. So how do I do it here in the lake or even in our local quarries to where I'm not having to stay still in one spot? Well, it's very simple. All our training areas, whether it's here at our local shop or here in our lake, or even the quarries that we use, the, what we call the playground areas has plenty of structures to look at that's any, anywhere between that 10 to 20 foot mark. And we always come back through the playground area during the last three to five minutes of our dive so that we're not sitting in one specific spot, just hanging out three to five minutes. We can actually continue to move, move ourselves under the water and swim along those objects still enjoying our dive but we do it at a consistent depth anywhere say 10 to 20 feet or average of 15 feet and we do it at the last three to five minutes of our dive now once again are we required to well according to the definitions both by the gear manufacturer and one of the larger training agencies you're not necessarily required to but they are both highly recommended to do. So whether you decide to do one or not, let me know down in the comments section below. If you're a recreational diver, do you always make a safety stop? When do you not make a safety stop? And I'd like to know from you guys, what do you think in the matter? Guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you really liked it, hit that like button for me. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to us. If you got any ideas for future videos or other topics and discussions you would like for me to talk about, simply put it down in the comment section or send me a message. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.